Welcome back to Horrifying Stories. 17-year-old Julianne Coep was seated at 19F of Lanza Airlines Flight 508. Her seat was on the second to the last row, by the window, just like how she likes it. Around 15 minutes before their scheduled landing at Pucalpa, Peru, a strong thunderstorm suddenly ensued, constantly shaking their aircraft. Not long after, she saw an exceedingly bright light flash over the aircraft wing. The next thing she knew, the aircraft was already in a steep and speedy descent nose down into the world's biggest rainforest. This is, their horrifying story. Viewer discretion, is advised. It was December 24, 1971, and Julianne wasn't alone then. She flew with her mother, Maria Koepke, as they were about to head home and join her father, Hans Wilhelm Koepke for Christmas. Initially, Maria had wanted to fly earlier, but Julianne still had to stay in Lima for a few more days to attend her high school graduation ceremony and their ball. Thus, a last-minute Christmas Eve flight. Adding to the holiday rush, some flights had been cancelled the day prior, so the Lima airport was packed with people that day. Lanza Airlines aircraft for Flight 508 was the Lockheed L-188A Electra turboprop which had a dreaded image. 58 out of the total 170 Electra aircrafts had been forcefully retired due to critical defects or worse, damaged beyond repair due to a crash. Her father Hans had heard of its reputation and was apprehensive in letting them book the flight. He advised them to look for other options. Apparently, it seemed to be their only chance to make it in time for the Christmas Eve celebration so Maria and Julian pushed through. Maria and Julian boarded the 99-seater aircraft and settled themselves down in their respective seats at 19 E and F, beside each other. Flight 508 took off before noon and flight time to Pucalpa, Peru was around one hour, before it would proceed to its ultimate destination, Iquitos, Peru. The flight went on as usual and as soon as they were at cruising altitude, the flight attendants started to serve sandwiches for their complimentary in-flight snacks. However, more than halfway through their flight as they were flying above the thick forest of Amazon, they were caught in a sudden thunderstorm. Right then and there, the aircraft went through extreme turbulence. The excitement that the Christmas holidays brought suddenly turned to fear and panic among the flight's 92 passengers and crew. Julianne looked over the window, and instead of the view of the lush green rainforest, all she could see was the dark skies and flashes of lightning. Turbulence was so bad, that hand-carried baggage and wrapped presents had already been dislodged from the overhead bins. Some of the drinks even got spilled and snack trays were all over the place. Panic and fear-stricken, passengers started to shout and cry as they prayed for the storm to stop. Suddenly, right before Julianne's very eyes, lightning struck the wing of the aircraft and within seconds, the turboprop was already descending fast in a nose dive into the world's largest rainforest, the Amazon rainforest. Mid-air, the aircraft disintegrated to pieces and Julianne found herself alone still strapped to her seat as everything was falling down. By the looks of it, among all the passengers in their row, it appeared as if only Julianne was wearing the seat belt during that time. As she looked down, she could see the thick and luscious forest beneath her that seemed like broccoli heads from her point of view, before she went unconscious. The next thing she knew, she was already flat on the ground soaked in mud, with her glasses nowhere to be found the morning after. She had a concussion, her left eye was swollen, her collarbone broken along with many other injuries. Her sleeveless mini dress had already been torn and obviously dirty. In spite of these, thankfully, more than anything else, she survived the fall. The thick canopies of the forest must have been instrumental in cushioning her fall. Her first instinct was to look for her mother first and foremost, and others who might have also survived. However, she couldn't find anyone else. The only thing she found was a bag of fruit candies. Then, reality sunk in and she felt so alone and abandoned. Surviving the crash was one thing, but it was another thing to make it out alive and seek help, especially in such an extremely dense forest like the Amazon. Nevertheless, Julianne didn't sense even an inch of fear of the jungle, 
probably only on her quest for rescue but never of the jungle. She knew what she had to do and had the survival skills needed to thrive in the jungle. It was a familiar territory for Julianne. Growing up, she had spent a lot of time in the forest. Her mother, Maria, was an ornithologist, and her father Hans Wilhelm, was a zoologist. Both parents were from Germany, they met when they were in college at the University of Kiel. Overwhelmed with passion, they both decided to move to Peru and eventually got married in Peru's capital, Lima. Located somewhere in the vast rainforest was the biological research station, called Panguana Station, which the couple themselves had built to further expand their knowledge of Amazon's ecosystem. The Panguana Station had become this little family's home. At first, Julianne was homeschooled at Panguana for many years but eventually continued her studies at Lima. In the years that she has been mostly away from home, she hasn't forgotten all that she had learned from both parents. She knew the forest like it was on the back of her hand. When she heard the sound of frogs and birds around her, she immediately recognized that her home, the Panguana Station, was not far away from where she was. But she also knew that in the vastness of the Amazon forest, it would only take one wrong turn and she would easily go further away, deeper into the thick forest. The following morning, her second day in the jungle, with only one sandal and without any glasses, she went forward and looked for the nearest river. It was something that her parents, most especially her father, had always taught her, to look for water and follow it if she ever gets lost in the jungle. Any small body of water will always lead to a larger body of water, and eventually to civilization, as humans normally tend to settle close to the water source. When she found a small stream, she walked and floated in the middle, recalling what her dad told her that piranhas are only dangerous in shallow waters. Also, it was the rainy season during that time so the weather wasn't particularly helping Julianne. Heavy rains that constantly poured almost all through the day added up to the already challenging conditions. Nothing around her was dry enough to light a fire and it wasn't the season for trees to bear fruit either. She was careful in picking and feeding on anything that she didn't recognize as it might be poisonous. On the fourth day, she heard the frightening sound of vultures. When she followed where the sound was coming from, she came upon a horrifying scene. She saw three passengers still seated and strapped in their row, half of their bodies headfirst, buried to the ground because of the strong impact of their fall. One of them was a woman, so Julianne went closer to check if it was her mother. To her relief, she realized it wasn't, since the woman had her toenails polished which her mom would never have done. The sound of rescue planes reached her, but the thick forest concealed her existence from the rescuers. Thus, she continued on. By the tenth day, she was starved and extremely fatigued, her skin sunburnt by then. Just when she was about to lose all strength left, the sight of a small boat gave her a sudden boost of energy. Feeling like it was a dream, she went close to it and realized it wasn't just her imagination fooling her. As she looked over, she saw a small hut just near the river shore. Without hesitation, she went inside. There was no one there but she found gasoline inside and used it to clean her wounds that maggots had already started feeding on. She stayed in the hut that night, the most decent shelter she's had in days. The next morning, on January 3, 1972, 11 days after the crash, three local fishermen found her inside their shelter, skinny and dirty. When she had awakened, she told them in Spanish who she was and that she was one of those passengers from the Lanza crash. The fishermen immediately took her to the village and in no time, she was airlifted to a hospital in Pucalpa and soon after, got reunited with his father. As soon as she had recovered, she went back and guided the rescue team to where the crash site was, helping them to retrieve the bodies. It was on January 12, 1972 that rescuers found her mother's body. Apparently, it was believed that Maria had also survived the crash, but her injuries were so severe it didn't allow her to move. She only died a few days later. The thought of her mother's last days horrified Julianne. Around two months later, March of 1972, Julianne was able to fully recover and continued on with her studies in Lima. However, having been the sole survivor of a fatal plane crash, the media often chased her wanting to feature her story. This prompted her father to send her back to her aunt in Kiel, Germany. 
Taking inspiration from her parents and her own experience, she graduated from the University of Kiel with a bachelor's degree in biology in 1980 and earned her doctorate degree from Ludwig Maximilian University. She went back to Panguana where she spent 18 months conducting extensive research on bats. In 1998, film director Werner Herzog asked her if she was willing to have her story be made into a documentary. Interestingly, Werner happened to be booked for the same flight that fateful day, but his life was spared due to a last-minute change in his itinerary. Upon her agreement, they traveled back to the crash site to film the documentary. As they revisited the site, he interviewed and listened to the horrifying experience of Julianne. To her, the visit back to that dreadful site and Werner's genuine listening skills had become her best therapy. The one-hour documentary was entitled Wings of Hope and was released in 2000. Julianne also authored the book entitled When I Fell from the Sky, How the Jungle Saved My Life, translated into 12 languages, first published in 2011. Julianne also made sure her parents' legacy continued on as well. She was able to expand the Panguana Research Station from 460 to a total of 1,730 acres, and was able to secure the area's permanent protection from the Peruvian government, after it was declared as a nature reserve. To this day, the memory of the extreme suffering her mother might have gone through, along with those of the other victims and the thought of being the sole survivor continues to haunt her. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Let us know what you think about this story, we would love to hear from you, and also feel free to drop us a comment for any story suggestions. Again, thank you and see you on the next one.